Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys five fast, easy, and fun visual effects that you can use in DaVinci Resolve in order to modify your video clips. So the first one is the vortex effect, which you can use in order to twist the screen around, like so, and take a person, make their face look a little bit ridiculous for a few seconds. And I've seen multiple other YouTubers use it as kind of a gag thinking meme. So if you want to use this in your own video clips, let's go ahead and recreate this really quick. So I'm going to open up my media pool and the effects library. Let's just grab the same clip, put it into the timeline. And then this is the default look for the stock footage. Pretty normal shot has kind of a bedside vlogger kind of vibe there. So if you want to find all of these effects that I'm talking about in the video, you go to the effects library. So inside of this menu, you're going to be looking for open effects and vortex is all the way down at the bottom. So, so where it says GPU vortex here, we can drag that onto any video clip in order to modify it. Now, when we add it onto the clip, most likely one of the first problems you're going to notice is that the positioning of the vortex circle is in the center, but in most shots looking at a person, the head is actually going to be a little bit higher than that. So if we go to the inspector in the top right and go to the open effects or open FX tab, then you can adjust the position of your vortex by taking the Y position and moving that upwards a bit. So just position it wherever you'd like it. Now, another thing to note, when you just drag the effect on, it's not going to be animated at all. It's only going to be applying the vortex effect consistently across the position of the screen that you're looking at. But you may want to have a little bit of animation there. So one property that you can use for this would be the angle. So you can see that when we spin the angle around, the higher or lower the value is away from zero, the more dramatic the twist effect is going to be. And if we were to animate the property from zero to wherever we want to end up with, we can have an interesting spiraling animation happen there. So for the shot you want to add the effect to, you should go to the first frame. You can use the snapping and the timeline in order to make sure you get there. And you should set a keyframe there by clicking on the little gray diamond. So when we do this, we can set the starting value. In my case, I'm going to have it start from a angle of zero. So at the start of the shot, it actually has no vortex visible there. And then we can go one or two seconds into the video clip and set where we want the vortex to end up at. So we can increase this angle here. And you'll notice that when we set a new value here, a new keyframe is automatically created. So we can go back to the first keyframe by hitting the left arrow and then hitting play from there to get a view of how it looks. So this is kind of a slower effect than what I had at the start. So if you want, you can actually just adjust the position of the keyframe. The easiest way to do that is going to be to click this keyframe button on the clip in the timeline. So one way that we can change the positioning is going to be to double click on the value of the angle here, hit control C to copy it, click on the red diamond to remove the keyframe, go to a new position for the timing that we want to add the keyframe back in. So you could cut the time in half here. And then go to a earlier point in the clip. Uh, maybe you cut the duration in half here. And then you put the angle back in that you had before. Um, in this case, I'll just kind of type it in and manually set it. But you can paste it with Control V if you have it in your buffer with Control C, Control V. And now just by moving the keyframes like that, we can go back to the start of the effect, play it, play it, and it should go a lot faster there. If this amount of twisting isn't enough for you, then you can increase the swirl to make it spin around many more times. So you can increase this all the way and get many, many rotations before it reaches that center point if you want. So the next effect is camera shake, which you can use for a few options. The first of which would be to create a earthquake effect. So you could take any shot which seems reasonable and uh, create a earthquake effect by having the camera shake a little bit for the duration of the clip. As an alternative to that, if you want to take someone's face who is trying to express anger and make it way overblown, and you can give your clip something like this, having the camera shake in and out, as well as side to side with really dramatic movements. Um, this kind of thing, a little bit overblown, but if you really want to emphasize someone being angry or frustrated, it could be an interesting option to go with. So the difference between these two varieties of camera shake is just going to be all in the settings. So if we open up the effects library again, find camera shake under resolve effects transform, drop that onto our clip. Uh, then we can start modifying the settings. So initially, I would say for a light to medium earthquake, the default settings are still way too strong. You can see, especially with its vertical shaking, it's just way too much. So if you want to lower down the amount of shaking that goes up or down, take the tilt amplitude in the inspector, open effects, 
and lower that down. So I'll bring that way down to something like 0 0.076 here. And now we can play back the clip a little bit. And now you can see that the shaking itself is much more side to side. But I'll probably lower down the pan amplitude, which is left to right, and the tilt amplitude a little bit more as well. So that brings us down to something like this, which isn't too bad. I would say that the shot still looks a little bit too wobbly though, so you can also lower down this rotation amplitude so that it stops churning on the side so much. So let's bring that setting down to something very low, like 0 0.14. And now if we play it again, uh, we could say that this is a little bit more realistic. We may still want to lower down the settings. Or if you want to scale all of the settings down at once, you can use motion scale, which is kind of like a multiplier effect on everything that you had set before. So a smaller earthquake can be created just by bringing this down to something like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And that's pretty much all you need to do to get a basic earthquake effect going on there. Of course, you have more settings to play around with, and you can customize the settings to your liking. Now, if you want that really angry or frustrated look, one thing you could do to start off with would be to zoom in on the person's face so that that is emphasized. So let's go ahead and increase the zoom here and adjust the Y position so that we're looking at the face. And now that this is really close up on the man's face, we can really see his emotion in the shot. So let's go to the effects library and add in the camera shake here. So one thing that we can do to make this camera shake very wild and overly dramatic is to actually add in zoom amplitude and zoom speeds. So this will have the clip kind of zoom inwards and optionally outwards too, in addition to the shaking and the rotation of the default camera shake. So if we add in some amplitude and zoom speed here, um, and then also boost the amplitude and tilt amplitude as well in order to just make the effect more dramatic and play it back, then we end up with a more dramatic camera shake there. So let's go ahead and increase the rotation amplitude as well. Maybe we also want some motion blur to imply not being in the right state of mind. Okay, and actually in the original clip, I actually had the pan and tilt even higher than that. So let's just bump it all the way up there. And if you want to make something that looks truly horrifying, uh, what you could do here is go to video, take the composite mode, and then change that down to pin light which is going to remove the vast majority of the background, leaving only the most leaving only the most lit part of the person's face actually showing through in the final clip. So this can give you something like this, which honestly is quite terrifying. So next, let's talk about the third effect. So what you're looking at now is a vignette. And what vignette does is basically puts a black ring around the edges of your clip and focuses your attention at one specific area. In this case, by default, it's centered on the center of the clip, of course. So as you go outwards from that center point, you start to fade to black more and more. So you could use this to give kind of a spotlight effect to your video, or maybe to kind of fake looking through a pair of binoculars. So let's go ahead and play through this clip for a few seconds. So it's really not much more fancy than that. It just keeps your eyes focused on the center area and fades the outer parts outwards. So if you want to recreate that, open up the effects library and then scroll down until you see vignette, which is in the stylized section. So if we drop this onto our video clip, we'll see we have that black vignette on the outer edges. Now you can see that by default, uh, the vignette is not as intense as I had it originally. So if you want, you can go to open effects and modify the settings for that vignette. So if you want to pull these black edges inwards more so that the vignette only shows a small portion of the original clip, then you can decrease the size of the shape, which will focus your attention more and more at one particular part. And if you want to increase or decrease this soft blurring here that you see on the edges between the blackness and the center clip, then you can modify the softness setting. So if you decrease the softness, it is going to look a lot more like a normal oval shape and it will have significantly less blurring than before, uh, just having. So if you decrease the softness, then the shape is going to become much more clearly visible because the amount of blurring on that edge has been reduced. If you want there to be a significant amount of blurring as it goes to the outer edges, you can increase the softness uh, pretty much to the point where the vignette is almost not visible to begin with. So you probably want something in the middle there.
Now for this shape here, you can see that by default, it is a simple circle. But if you want to modify that into another type of oval shape, you can increase or decrease the anamorphism. So if you drop it down to a low value, it's going to be a very vertical oval. And if you increase it upwards to the max of 3.0, then it is going to be a very horizontal egg shape. Once again, you may just want it to just be clearly in the middle. Now you might also decide that you don't want this vignette to be centered on the center area. So if you want, you can change the operating mode to advanced, where you have access to center X and center Y position settings. So we can adjust those in order to control where the vignette is targeting. And uh, one interesting thing you could do here is animate the center X or the center Y over time. Uh, so for instance, I could go to this first frame here, set the center X to the left side and go a few seconds in and then adjust the center X value to let's say 1.0. And then if I was to play it back, you would actually have like a moving spotlight right there, which could be a really cool effect for certain videos. But if that's not necessary, you don't need to keyframe those. You can just leave it centered for the entire duration of the video clip, which may work for other cases, especially when the camera is already centered on the action object here. Okay, so the fourth effect, if you happen to have a video clip where it doesn't actually fit the full width of the video, basically, without having this blanking fill effect turned on, what happens is that it can't fill the screen because it just doesn't have the right dimensions. Typically, a video would have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but you may not have every clip like that, or maybe your entire video was recorded vertically, but you still want it to be watched horizontally, then you can add in a blanking fill. So the blanking fill effect is super easy to add in. Uh, currently, I just have it on its default settings, and you can find this effect inside of Resolve Effects Stylize here. So just drag that onto a clip that doesn't completely fill the timeline resolution. So what it will do is take your video clip in the center and make that also in the background as well and stretching it to the resolution of your video. Now when you do this, you might not actually want the background to be that easy to tell what's going on. You really want to have it focused on the actual video clip in the center. So what you could do is increase the blur background if you find the blanking fill background too distracting. You can also have the blanking fill background combine with a color selected with this fade color here and in an amount which you set here with fade amount. So the higher fade amount is, the more of the fade color is going to be multiplied with that background blanking fill. So we can select a color here that we want the background to look like. Um, probably in most cases, you'll want to stick with some variation of white to gray, uh, just so it's not too distracting because you can see very vibrant colors are definitely going to pull your attention away from the center of the clip in most cases. So let's just set it as a rather dark color there. And that's most of what you need. Uh, if you do want the middle clip to kind of have a 3D pop out effect, you can achieve that with a drop shadow menu. So if we take the shadow strength here and increase that above zero, then on all sides surrounding the clip in the timeline, there, there will appear this by default black shadow that kind of spreads out from the original clip area. And you have settings to adjust that as well, such as the blurriness or the color of that drop shadow. In most cases, though, I would find this unnecessary. So I'll just drag that back down to zero for the shadow strength, and we'll just ignore the drop shadow here. So that will let our clip look like this. So no annoying black space in the background, which is good. Okay, so finally, the fifth effect we'll talk about in this video is light rays. So light rays can be used for achieving various fake lighting effects in your video. But the basic idea is that anything that is above a certain brightness threshold, this source threshold in your video clip, will start to emit light rays based on the settings you add down below. So without light rays on, you can see that this base video clip of the people's faces is relatively dark. It doesn't look like it's in a particularly well lit room and that sort of thing. So we can adjust that and give it a completely different look with the light rays effect. So once again, like all of the other open effects that we find in DaVinci Resolve, uh, we can find light rays by going to the top here in open effects to resolve effects light, and we drag light rays onto the clip. So we can see that with the default settings of light rays, we end up with a couple problems for what we might want to achieve with people's faces here. First off, we can easily see their origination point of the light rays. It's 
centered right here at the top of the screen. Secondly, the light rays themselves are very visible in the sense that we can actually see the lines of the rays. Um, and we probably don't want that for this particular look. So first off, if you want to change the light rays to not be originating from a certain point, but to be at a certain angle, we can change that by going to positions and then ray directions and change it from, from a location to at an angle. So when we do this, there'll be no discernible point for where the light rays are coming from, but rather we just control the direction of all of the light rays in one go. Secondly, I want to soften the light rays so that they're much more blurred and harder to identify. So let's increase the softness here. And now it gives us much more of a smooth lighting effect on the person's face. And what I was liking earlier was changing the ray drop off from the default soft ray drop off to CCD Bloom Soft. So I find that the look of this is really nice for something like a dream sequence or if you want someone to appear overly angelic. And once again, it's kind of going a little bit over the top. But in some circumstances, that might actually be exactly what you're looking for. If you do find that the effect of this lighting here is way overblown, uh, you can lower the brightness down and letting more of the detail return to the person's face. So we can play through this and kind of see how it will look for our people now. And uh, you should be able to see that all of the faces are much more brightly lit thanks to the light rays. So without the light rays, everything ends up looking kind of dull and dark. And maybe that's fine if you want all of the people to look really sad. But by using light rays in this manner, we can basically take any shot and make it a lot brighter, which is great for that kind of angelic or brightening the mood kind of look. Of course, you can also use light rays with different settings if you literally want to have visible light rays coming out of something like a building at night that just happens to have some bright disco lights going on. But that's going to be it for this list of five fast and easy visual effects that you can apply basically out of the box in DaVinci Resolve 16. So I hope you guys learned something useful. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.